In this problem, we're looking at a pipe which has a contraction in it. It has a large diameter at the inlet and a small diameter at the outlet. What we know about the pipe is the inlet area, A1, 2 meters squared. The velocity inlet is V1, 3 meters per second. And at the outlet, we have a smaller diameter, which results in an area 2 of 1 meter squared. And we're looking for three things in this problem. One is the mass flow that's going through the pipe. Two is the outlet velocity. And three is the change in pressure across the pipe between here and there. So let's have a look at how to solve this problem. And I'm going to put this to the side so we can keep an eye on the, on the thing. And let's work through the problem. The first question is answered relatively easily. The mass flow is the density um, times the area times the velocity. And we can apply this anywhere inside the pipe, but we choose to apply it where we know the most information, which is at the inlet one. So let's put the one over here and the two over there. So we have a clear idea of what we have. A1 and V1 belong to one. So we have A1 and V1. So let's take a row one, A1 and V1 like so. And it's very easy. Water has a density of a thousand kilo kilograms per meter cubed. So 10 to the power three here. The area one is given here as two and the velocity one is given here as three. Yes. So this gives us six times 10 to the power three, six times 10 to the power three. And these are kilograms every second, kilograms per second, like so. Yes. And I could also express this in tons because it's a lot of it's a lot of mass per second, um, and this is six tons per second. So about the weight of six cars every second passing through the inlet of this pipe. Okay. Now this water is coming in. Um, six tons per second are coming in at the inlet here, and they're traveling through the pipe. And by the time they exit, they're still here. Uh, no mass is created. No mass is destroyed. And so since the area too is smaller, um, the flow has got to exit quicker it has got increased velocity and this is what we after what is the velocity at the outlet well the mass flow has not changed between the inlet and the outlet m m dot here through the system it's a steady flow um, is row one a1 v1 but it's also equal to row two v2 a2 or row two a2 v2 as you prefer yeah so those two things are equal we know that quantity here and the at the outlet here, we know A2, uh, we know the density has not changed, it is still water, so there are 1000 kilo kilograms per meter cube, and so using this we can find V2. Now we can just re-express, we can just put the number for M dot, which we just had here, and try to get V2 by dividing M dot by row 2 and A2, but a nicer, more elegant way is to just re-express V2 as a function of V1, so I write V2 is equal to V1, like so v2 is equal to v1 and what do i have to put on the side i have to put a1 divided by a2 a1 divided by a2 yes and then i have row one divided by row two row one divided by row two yes and then of course the two densities are the same it's still water water flows in an incompressible way yeah so we still have here v1 a1 over a2 like so and then i can just say put numbers now v1 is three meters per second so this is three times a1, a1 is 2, and a2 is 1 here. Um, so I have 6, and immediately I write units, and I have to remember what I was calculating, it's a velocity, it's got to be 6 meters per second, v2 here, like so. Now, pretty much every time you calculate the velocity using the mass conservation equation, you have to ask yourself, is this true or not? Is this realistic or not? Because if you look at the velocity of the water, um, it's changed quite a lot. You come in at 3 meters per second and you exit at 6 meters per second. The velocity has doubled. The water has got more kinetic energy. And immediately comes the question, who pays? Who pays for this increase in kinetic energy? Yeah. So every time you calculate the velocity, 6 meters per second, you have to ask yourself, is this true? Is this realistic? Um, and who, where does this energy come from? Who is paying for this increase in kinetic energy? And this, uh, we answer with the question, what is the change in pressure here? And let me show you how to calculate the change in pressure. Well, we start with the energy balance equation. We could start with the Bernoulli equation. I don't like the Bernoulli equation too much. 
and I'll show you why in a different example. Um, so we'll start with the energy balance equation. And the energy balance equation um, is written like so. It says that the net power as heat provided to the pipe plus the net power as work provided to the pipe. And so this is equal to the change of energy of the flow. And this change of energy, we can write it like so. We take the mass flow here, and this is now all the properties at the inlet. And there are different forms of energy that the flow can have. One is the internal energy, how much heat it has inside, inside itself. It's going to be I1. In thermodynamics, we call this U, but in fluid mechanics, we prefer I because U is used for velocity. So I, I1, plus then the pressure, P1, divided by the density, rho 1, yes. And I take very much care to always differentiate the way I write pressure and density because I don't want to goof up and mix them up. Yes. Uh, plus then one half of the velocity squared. This would be the kinetic energy. And this is the thing that's going to increase now. Yes. And then this GZ1, the potential, altitude potential energy. And this is what's coming in. Yes. And what's coming in usually is written with a negative term, like so. Um, and then what's leaving is here, and it's the same mass flow here, multiplied by the same terms, but with index 2. And so this is I2 plus P2 over rho 2 plus 1 half of V2 squared plus GZ2, like so. All right. So it's a long equation. It's longer than the Bernoulli equation, but it's a very safe equation because everything is in there. This works every time you have a steady flow and every time you have um, uh, fixed control volume. So as long as your pipe is not inflating or deflating, yeah, and as long as you take many pictures of the flow and they remain the same, this equation will hold. The Bernoulli equation has many more constraints added to it and they're hard to remember and they're hard to, hard to work with. So I always prefer spending 20 seconds more writing the whole equation and then crossing out terms that cancel out rather um, than being too quick and then risking making big mistakes by applying an equation that doesn't apply. So in here, what is applying and what is not applying? Well, what is the heat transfer added or subtracted to the flow, Q net, here? This is zero. It's not heating up. It's not cooling down. Um, the same thing goes for the power. There is no here. There is no input of a propeller, an impeller, there's no extraction through a turbine or any moving part inside, it's just a pipe. Uh, so the fluid is just left to itself to exchange energy that it possesses already. Um, and so these terms are over here. What? Let's start with the easy, easy part. Uh, the altitude does not change, it's a horizontal pipe. So this goes uh, to zero, both of those cancel out. And then I'm left with velocity, pressure, and internal energy. Internal energy, when the flow is perfect, and when there's no friction and the pipe is ver has very smooth corners, this internal energy will not change. It means the fluid will not convert friction uh, work as increase in internal energy or increase in temperature. Yeah? So as long as the flow is perfectly smooth, which is the case in this example, uh, the I will not change. And I'm left with figuring out, now we can see, where the increase in kinetic energy comes from. V2 is greater than V1. Why? Because there's a decrease in P2 compared to P1. And this is what we want to calculate. So let's take this equation now, and then we crossed out all the annoying terms, and let's look at the comparison between P and V. So this becomes now zero. Yes, is equal to, I'm going to divide both sides, now the zero on the left side and the right side by the mass flow here. So I just have now here, zero is P1 over rho one plus one half of V1 squared, yes. And this is in a parenthesis that has a minus in front, yes. Plus on the other side, um, here, this part here, P2 over rho two plus one half of V2 squared, like so. And now let's try to get P2 minus P1, which is what we want to have. Let's try to isolate them on one side of the equation. And so I'm going to have P2 divided by rho, rho 2, yes, minus P1 divided by rho 1. So this is fine. And now I, I've got on the other side here, I've got this plus becomes a minus. So I've got here 
1 half of v1 squared yes, minus 1 half of v2 squared, like so. Row 2 and row 1 in this case are the same because it's water. A case where it would not be the same would be, for example, air when there is a lot of heat transfer. Or if I added heat to heat or, or, or a very inefficient turbine, then for sure the density of the water would, would, would change, the density of the fluid would change. But in this case, uh, it's water is incompressible, so rho is the same. So I can just say now P2 minus P1, and I take the rho here and I put them on the other side, and it's just called rho now. It's going to be one half of rho of V1 squared minus V2 squared. V1 is high. Um, V2 is even higher. So V1 squared minus V2 squared is going to be a negative number. And so P2 minus P1 is going to be a negative number, which means P2 here is going to be smaller than P1. Yeah. So we expect a negative number coming up here. So this I call, this, I call it delta P. Let's call it delta P here. Yeah. Delta P is equal to let me let me write it aligned so I do not I do not have terms of an equation that are all over the place let's have here delta P here um, and put numbers now one half of rho is 10 to the power of 3 yes 1000 kilograms per meter cube multiplied by v1 squared v1 was 3 meters per second 3 squared minus v2 here uh, squared which is six like this and then I can have uh, this in my calculator which I did for you before and this shows up as minus 1.35 times 10 to the power of 4 and immediately I write the units and the units of pressure are pascals or newtons per meter squared yes so newton per meter squared or pascals yes and in engineering, we like always to write pascals, kilopascals, megapascals, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to convert this here to kilopascals. So it's going to be minus 13.5 kilopascals here. And this is the delta P. This is P2 minus P1. So we see here that when the flow accelerates and there is nobody to pay for this from the external uh, environment, and there is no dissipation due to friction losses, then the increase in kinetic energy is paid for by a decrease in pressure. Yeah? Who pays for the kinetic energy increase? Pressure does. Okay? It would be the reverse. If we had an expansion in the pipe, we would expect the pressure to increase. Again, providing there's no input from the external environment and there's no dissipation due to friction. So this is how you calculate mass flow, velocity, and changing pressure in a very simple case.